What's up you guys, hey it's Buck, and in this video I want to talk about uh, surgical, actually procedural consents. The reason I want to talk about this is because they're very, they're very different everywhere, in, as in different hospitals, and uh, different administrations and hospital administrations require different consents and different people to get the consent like actually have the patient sign the consent. So I, I think this is important for like uh, nurses, PAs, NPs, obviously doctors, students, med students, all that stuff, because I think a lot of people don't realize that they're very different everywhere. Because I've been, I've been to a lot of different hospitals and it changes, like sometimes the consent has to be done by the, the like uh, the doctor, okay? And sometimes it's not required by the doctor, but the patient has to sign it with a witness. And a witness is usually the nurse, the PA, the NP, who, uh, you know, whoever's in the preoperative area, whatever. And then I go to other places that are required to do it by the surgeon. And then, so they sit, like they'll wait for me to come and show up, but I don't know that. First, I want to say that surgical consents are made by lawyers, okay? They're usually the attorneys of the hospital that make these consents. Second, they, are, don't really hold up in court, <laughs> okay? This makes absolutely no fucking sense. They don't hold up in court because they'll say like, oh, the patient was, you know, was sick and didn't understand or you didn't explain it, you know, enough or well enough or, or the patient signed because they felt they were being pressured or all this other stuff. Like lawyers will make up all sorts of fucking bullshit that, you know, just to get their client off, they don't care at all, they do not care. So it ends up they don't, it doesn't really matter if the consent is signed. So my whole point of this video is that what matters is that you talk to the patient and or family. So for me as a surgeon, I, got, I need to talk to the family if I'm doing a procedure, I need to talk to the patient if I'm doing uh, operation or whatever. And whoever the you know power of attorney is, if it's not the patient, if they're not making their medical decisions for themselves, then you need to talk to that person and you got you get an honest to goodness like good feeling that you've explained that procedure and the risks of the procedure and the reason you're doing it to that person whether it be the family or patient and you get an honest to goodness like they understand what is going on and if you can do that every time to for everybody then you can feel confident that you can then stand up in court and say, yes, I explained this, okay? So that's kind of like where I'm, where I'm getting. Side note is that when, if you go to court, which I've been, and it sucks, what they often say, well, what, what is your, what is the usual thing that you do? Like, how do you approach this normally? Because we see so many patients, you can't remember the details of all of them. And so if you're doing something the same way every time, you say, the way I usually do this is that I go and I explain this type of procedure or I explain this procedure this way and I confirm that they understand by, you know, either they tell to tell me back or they say, I ask them, do they have any questions or do you really understand? Because sometimes like I'll do, I'll talk to people about say gallbladder or whatever and, they, and they've talked to four different people and they don't really understand. I can see it in their eyes, right? You can talk to them and they are you're like they don't they don't get this let me draw you a picture real quick so you draw them a picture real quick and they're like oh yeah now i get it now i get it so that's very important to get that like you know because there's a lot of things that are not written down in the chart that are human cues right 80 percent of communication is nonverbal, but yet we rely only on our uh papers you know like the documentation like in, in court or, or if we're going back over it for billing or just question from the administration, the administration come to me and ask me like why I did an order on such and such at 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, I'm not even, I'm not even there at 5, 5 a.m. Like normally I'm not there. So it doesn't make any sense to me. The documentation is all screwed up. Like they, but they, but that's all they rely on. So they cannot go by anything else. So my point is like, if you start to learn to do the same thing or you know, certain things the same way every time, then you can always rely on that. You can always go back and say, 
you know what, I'm very, very confident you can look somebody else in the eye or you can look, you know, family members of somebody that either died or had, you know, you know, bad problem, whatever, because, you know, especially in surgery, like, bad shit happens. You know, you play football, you're gonna get tackled. You play surgery, bad shit's gonna happen. Sometimes it's your fault, sometimes it's not your fault. But you need to be able to look people in the eye and say, you know, human to human and say like, I did my best to explain this to you guys. I thought that, you know, that I did. You acknowledge this by so such and such. And, you know, I'm sorry that you didn't under, understand that. But when you do that, most of the time, you're not gonna have a problem. If you genuinely look people in the eye and explain to them and say, these are, you know, this is the surgery. These are my concerns. This is what I think is gonna happen, but I could be wrong. Most people understand that and they are okay with that. And they're not gonna come back and say like, oh my God, you know, we didn't expect such and such. In my situation, I never talked to family, oh, I talked to patient. And then the patient was not there to talk to after. Then, you know, the family is wondering who this jerk is that's the surgeon, but I, you know, had a good rapport with the patient. I know I talked to the patient. So then I was able to say, I did these things, I talked to him, he understood, and I was confident he understood because I do this. That's how I do it. It sort of came up today, not really that same uh, situation, but uh, really came up today with, you know, we had a consent, but it didn't get signed and it got lost, <laughs> or it got signed and got lost. Now what do you do? Now we can't get a whole family. Time for the procedure. The patient is out, you know, like is not making their own decisions. Now what? That's how I feel about that stuff. You know, everybody kind of gets really nervous about about doing something without documentation, but documentation like is wrong all the time. But if you can really just be sure to do to look people in the eye all the time and say like these are, this is what's going on, then you'll sleep at night better. I kind of got off track, but you know, with the doc, with the consents, they are different. And some hospitals require the surgeon to so have the patient sign, like they sign, and the surgeon signs, and some are not. And then it's strictly based on the hospital administration, whatever they decide. So whatever your hospital is, obviously you gotta go by that. But just know that just because you know, the surgeon or the doctor doesn't sign the consent doesn't mean they didn't talk to him, first of all, because I always talk to everybody, whether I have to, con I typically don't have a consent in my pocket, so I'll go talk to a patient, say it, whatever, and then, you know, later in the maybe pre-op, I'll, go, I'll so actually sign it, but everybody kind of freaks out sometimes. They're like, oh my God, you didn't talk to the patient about the OR, and they're like, they're uh, they're right here, they're, they're in the pre-op, they're about ready to go back. I'm like, no, I already talked to them. I always do that. I think that's my spiel. It's like pretty random thoughts there, but I, th I think it's important because I just see a lot of ambiguity between a lot of different healthcare providers about who is supposed to do it, when are they supposed to do it, uh, how are they supposed to do it, and all that stuff. So just know, you know, they are different. Do what your hospital tells you. And then know that it doesn't make, make a damn bit of difference if you actually are taking that thing to court. What really matters is that you're making a human connection, and uh, you, you know, you know, you know that for you. So that and that patient knows that. If you if you two know that, you know you you could get burned in court still, but uh, you at least will feel good about it. So that's uh, that's my little rant today. All right, you guys. Hey, thanks for watching these videos. I uh, hope you like them. If you do, like them, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.